Hello everybody, welcome back to the second episode of my channel. This is Vinik Fay, and yes, there has been a lot of progress that I need to show you. Um, but why, you may say? Last episode, you specifically mentioned that we were going to show most of this stuff on camera. Well, yes, yes, that is exactly what was the intention. But unfortunately, I got screwed over by what is called life. To be more specific, I got screwed over by a random number generator, but I'll get to that in a second. First, we need to take a look at what we have done. Uh, what you see over there, back in the distance, the big gaping hole inside, well, not really the mountain, but, you know, the hill, I guess. Um, that is where we settled last time. That is where um, the opening was and where we tried to uh, have our first temporary base in this world and we succeeded um, but unfortunately uh, the base was not as successful or shall we say as resourceful as we had hoped. Without further ado uh, we'll have a look and then you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, now, all kidding aside um, I did actually try recording an episode. Um, I tried uh, I think on Monday? Not sure, don't really remember. Um, so yeah, I started recording an episode, um, got about 20 minutes in, but then after it was all done, I basically started to scrap it, the whole thing. Um, for those of you following me on Twitter, I think that's two people at this point. Um, I actually tweeted about it. Um, if you are interested, my Twitter handle is at Finnickfay, uh, really obvious. Um, so yeah, um, the problem was that I basically got completely screwed over by the random number generator that created this world for us. Um, if you remember, um, the stairs are new, but that's not biggie. Um, this is actually the cave that we originally came, on, came up in. Um, it's very different than it was before. Uh, I cleaned up the walls, the ceilings, uh, the floor. I removed all the... Uh, diorite and andesite and granite, what have you. It was dirt over every, everywhere. There was coal, and I removed all of that stuff. Replaced it with smooth stone. Um, added some torches, some chests. Um, that was all fine. I mean, that wasn't a big deal. The big problem was this thing right here. Um, this cave was decent enough to get started, and this hole, this gaping hole that we have right here was promising enough to make me actually decide to settle here. And I figured that if I did that, I could have some nice, uh, fun caving expeditions to go down, get the resources, have a couple of nice trips. And then after that, we'd be set to go and move on to the next adventure. But no. Well, what happened was I went down and the caving lasted just about one minute. Um, there was one whole, one uh, corridor to the right and one corridor to the left, and they both ended. And that right there, if you remember, was um, it was actually also um, a corridor to a different part of the cave, and that was, as expected, just the surface cave. So it wasn't really a lot of you know good stuff to find here. Um, so yeah, that was really disappointing. Um, and whenever that happened, I decided. Um, to actually go caving someplace else, so I went someplace else. And you think, well, yay, that's where you got all the stuff, right? Nope. Um, so second cave, uh, I went over that direction somewhere. Um, found, again, a promising cave, went down. Um, caving expedition lasted a little bit longer. I think at that point it lasted about five minutes. Um, but again, really not that much to find. There was like two creepers, one zombie and a skeleton, but a bit of, bit of coal, bit of iron, that was about it. So uh, at that point I was getting really frustrated, so I relocated again to another cave because I really wanted to show you guys an episode. And again, I got totally screwed over. I found a ravine, uh, so I was really happy because I thought, well, yay, this goes really deep immediately. But, well, it was basically a ravine without any... Um, you know any branches or what have you so it was really done within within one minute I was done exploring the entire ravine so basically the episode was a bunch of nothing and I decided just to scrap it just you know putting out an episode just to put out an episode really doesn't apply to me um, doesn't really feel like good content so I decided not to 
So instead, um, I came back here and I um, started digging a hole way down uh, after I had uh, summoned all my powers of interior decoration and created this uh, <laughs> solid brick walls and the garden. The garden's pretty nice though. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> as you may notice, I'm not really the type, uh, the interior decorator kind of guy. I like my builds to be functional um, and look decent. I'm not really aiming for exquisitely good uh, detailed builds. Um, although I like to do that from time to time whenever I'm inspired. Uh, but in this case, I'm not really inspired just because this is a temporary house. And so far, it hasn't really given me a lot of good stuff. I did pick up some stuff while doing this though. I have quite a bit of uh, uh, cobblestone, although I dug a lot more, but I converted it into smooth stone to uh, fill up the holes in the wall. I um, have a lot of this stuff, so andesite, diorite, and granite. I haven't polished any of it because I wouldn't know why. Um, some gravel, some dirt, some uh, charcoal for uh, making torches and stuff and some iron, and as you can see, I also have a full set of iron armor, and let me put that back on, because I look way cooler then. Yay! Um, so yeah, we're all settled on iron, we have enough coal, we have a little wood left over, some tools, a little bit of food that we really don't use, because mutton, that's surprisingly... Um, you know how people say that uh, beef is the best food in the game? Well, I think it might be mutton, actually, because it has a lot of saturation, just like beef. And I think it also fills up four or five uh, chunks. I'm not really sure. But it's really good to have that stuff around you. It really fills up your tummy if you're hungry. So, yeah, a uh, bit of mob drops. I have some eggs that I want to create a chicken farm with, but uh, I'm not going to do it right now because those things are noisy as hell. Uh, and then some plants here. I've um, got some more reeds. Got some more weed and some seeds. Uh, getting a couple more every time. And then, well, the wood actually came from over here. Uh, if you remember, there was a bunch of trees here and I cut them, cut them all down just because I don't really like bir birch trees. And the only reason that I like having birch trees around is to chop them down for wood. Uh, I don't really like the way they look and I don't like the light wood as well. Uh, which isn't to say that I won't use them whenever I need them. I'm really not opposed to them, I just don't really like them. So yeah. Door is very rudimentary at this point. It's just uh, six blocks of dirt to keep the, mob, the mobs out. Um, don't think I'm ever going to do anything fancy with that, although that, I have to say, it is getting annoying. Um, so I might eventually have to do uh, some sort of simple piston setup or whatever just to get in and out quickly. Um, I would use doors, but I don't really like the too high doors, and um, unfortunately, zombies, they kick down the wooden doors, and iron doors are just a pain, so I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do with that. Anyway, um, back on track. What are we going to do this episode? Well, when I finished digging out, well, caving in this cave, the cave is actually down here somewhere. Um, I decided to go down. I mean, the actual odds of, of having no caves at all in this entire area um, is very slim. So I decided to go down, and lo and behold, check what I found. Ta-da! Another dead-end cave, or ravine, I should say, with three branches, and none of them lead anywhere. So this was another point of major frustration when I saw this. Um, but yeah, I mean... Not much you can do. There was a bit of coal down here, a little bit of iron. Uh, this is where the coal was. But other than that, not really any major, uh, major sources of, of resources, actually. Um, there is that little cubby over there. Uh, although, to be honest, I don't really expect, expect a lot of it, since um, in all my time that I spend cleaning this stuff up, I've only seen one skeleton come from there. And if it really was a big hole, I think there would have been a lot more. Um, yeah, um, we'll go check that out. I'm going to quickly grab a little bit more coal um, or charcoal um, so we can make some more torches should it be uh, a big hole. And if not, then uh, we'll probably go do something else. I actually discovered um, another cave um, fairly close to the house, actually. 
Uh, if you stand right in front of the house near the lake, well, I guess it's a lake, uh, sea. <laughs> sea is generally a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, if you stand right next to the ocean, actually, or, how am I calling it an ocean? Right next to the lake, sorry, uh, you actually hear zombies growling during the day. I'm sort of going to go down there. I actually went down a little bit just to take a peek. And I did find a cave, uh, although it's too soon to say if there's actually anything down there. I just lit up um, the immediate area and I didn't really check uh, inside to see if there was anything in there. Um, so we'll do that as soon as we're done here and then uh, see if that's worth anything. It actually did seem a bit bigger than the things I've been getting so far. See, yeah, exactly. Exactly what I thought. It's just another another basic cubby hole with nothing, nothing of any worth. So this, um, this is basically what you saw right here. This was my video on Monday. It was just um, running through caves that basically have no resources, waiting out the night, uh, finding a couple monsters and then going back to the house, doing some cleanup on the house, another cave and so forth. It was really not fun uh, for me as well. I mean, I tried to provide good content for you guys um, and then you get, well, screwed over by a random number, random number generator basically, which is really frustrating. Nothing you can do though. Uh, we'll just grab this coal because we're probably never going to come back here after this and we'll be on our way back into the world and do some more stuff. All right, um, maybe gonna come back for that later, not right now. All right. So, um, like I said before, what we're going to do now is have a quick nap, sleep the night away, and then go back down a little bit further down the line and look for adventure. Uh, so what are we looking for? Um, we're all set on iron, as you can see. We have a full set of armor. We have iron tools. We have a bit of iron here. Not too much. I'm looking for diamonds, specifically. Um, anything will do. Anything will get me going. A little bit more iron, a little bit more gold, stuff like that. Oh, hello. I really don't, don't want to push you through towards my house, though. So come here, and we'll have a... Whoa. Are you fast or anything? Are you on speed? Seems like he was going really fast. So let's have a quiet conversation here. All right, if you don't want to listen, then you have to go. That's that. So yeah, that's how I usually deal with creepers. Uh, having a stone sword doesn't really help because it takes a lot longer to actually kill them. But yeah. So here's the, the cave I found. Uh, I was constantly hearing zombie sounds from this direction and uh, this appeared out of nowhere. And hopefully this has a bit more resources, although this is not really a promising start. And hopefully it actually goes down a bit um, so we can actually get some more valuable stuff than we've been getting so far. All right, this is Good. We have occupants. Although I'm getting kind of scared looking at that because it already looks like this is not going to be a lot. I uh, see only one skeleton going back up again. And yeah, there we go again. Guess it's not really meant to be. Sorry, guys. I am going to grab this iron and this coal, though since we're already here and it seems too good to pass on. So might as well grab it. Um, I'm gonna cut the video right here since this is not really interesting stuff to watch. Uh, when we get back, uh, we're going on a mission because there's two things that I wanted to do today. One was caving, which apparently we're going to have to postpone to a different date, which is fine. Um, and another one was, uh, I'll just tell you in a sec. All right, guys, all good to go. We have the iron cooking, the coal mine. Didn't really take that long, but still, um, it's not that fun to watch, so we'll cut it out. So, uh, what are we going to do today? Well, today we're going on a mission. We're going exploring with one primary objective and a couple secondaries that we might do if we run into them. 
Um, although I have one specific thing in mind that I want to have, and that is leather. Not for iron, because I already have iron. I uh, don't, re don't really need leather armor. What I do need is books. I intend to use books a lot of this series, and to, to make them, you need leather. Uh, recipe was changed a number of patches back. That is really interesting, actually. Might look into that. Um, the recipe was changed a couple of patches ago. I'm not really sure if it's if it was for 1.7 or for 1.8, one of the pre-releases, I don't know. Um, but we need leather now, so let's go get and let's go get that. Uh, I spent some time on the treetops uh, before the beginning of this episode, and I seem to remember, um, or at least I should say, I thought I saw um, some cows on the top of these hills here. Uh, usually. Uh, you can find cows either on plain biomes or uh, on these hilly biomes. That's often where you see them as well, or where I have seen them a couple times, though, I should say, um, when I've been playing this game before. So I'm going to try my luck, and hopefully this time we will get uh, what we need, because uh, until now we haven't really been all that lucky during this, uh, this series, which is really, really a shame, because... Um, it makes it makes it harder for me to actually put out quality videos, um, but yeah, we'll just have to deal with it. So if we have some time, uh, maybe on the on the way back, we'll actually come and come back for these uh, for some saplings here. Although that's just a normal tree, but uh, and some of the pine trees for the pine wood. Uh, it's always good to have that kind of stuff. I don't really have a use for it right now. Get it. Get, get, sorry, don't really have use for it right now, um, but if I want to build with it, um, it's always frustrating if you want to build with a specific resource. Bunnies! Yeah, I really have no use for those guys though. Um, it's always annoying if you want to build with a specific resource and then you have to go and look for it, um, as we're actually doing right now with the, um, the cow hide, the leather I should say. Um, so yeah, that's why I try to have this stuff available to me whenever I find it, so I can actually use it uh, whenever I need to. And we only need a couple of saplings, so um, you know, if we have a couple, we're, we're set pretty much, because we can always regrow the trees easily. Right, it seems like that was a relatively small snow biome, actually. Um, and unfortunately, the sun is setting relatively quickly, so... We will either have to go back or go underground. Um, that is some more horses, actually. That's good. Uh, that is some more sheep. Don't need that. We have roofed forests. All right, that's good. Um, but let's stay in the hills here. I, um, I want to have some cows and some leather, so I think this is actually the right biome for it, although it seems to me that I'm wrong again. It's really, really getting annoying. At least we have some, we got some chickens out of the deal, and some eggs, that's always good. I am going to need a lot of chickens too though, if you want to make uh, a lot of arrows. Ideally it would be a skeleton drowning trap of course, or a mob grinder of any sorts, that would be ideal, but uh, those are, oh cows, yes, awesome. Gotta make the jump. Yes. All right. All right. Let's kill these guys. Earn the achievement. Get over here, Jesus. So hard to find, and now they're playing hard to get. All right. That was that. Have some mutton. Really love saying mutton. It's really. Well, it sounds awkward, sorry. Oh, some acacia. Okay, good, so that's good to know. So the warm biomes are actually that direction. Um, that's actually where I wanna go next. So try to remember that uh, might be useful information. Um, and by the way, that was uh, another reference to the future project that I have in mind. It's actually going to be in one of the warmer biomes, not really the um, what was it called again? I know it's, it houses the acacia wood, but I'm not really sure what the biome is called. Um, 
name escapes me now, and there's a witch over there. So, uh, uh, so okay, we have you. I guess I'll deal with you. Um, mm -hmm. A cave, a cave, my kingdom for a cave. And I'm gonna switch out to my iron sword, actually. Just because it kills mobs quicker. And there's another cow. How do we miss that? Damn. Okay, I actually wanna go up and kill that guy because I need a lot of leather. I want to have a full enchanting station as soon as possible, actually. Probably around the corner. Thank you. Okay, so far so good. Not too much problems with mobs. So where are we at? Another cow. Nice. So we haven't gone that far. I guess it's still relatively safe outside. Ah. Says he as he's getting shot at by a skeleton. Iron sword. Always good. Always helpful. Is that? Yeah, that's it. Where are these guys keep coming from? I just went past here. Jesus. I literally just passed this area, found no cows. Watch me go back to my house and then find lots of caves there all of a sudden. That would be sad. It would not be funny at all. That would be just sad. It's just like your death is very sad. That would also be sad. All right. So I guess we can call this mission a success. Um, seeing as we're so close to home, I'm just going to bounce. I'm going to uh, make my way home, make my books, um, so we can actually start using them. Uh, and whenever that's done, uh, we'll move on to the next thing in the episode. Made it back. Good. That was a little bit more intense than I had thought it would be. Uh, but then again, uh, we made it here safely. I think we only got hit once with a skeleton arrow. So that's good. Uh, we found pumpkins along the way, which is good. Um, don't really have any use for them. Um, but they're definitely going to be very useful in the future. So let's just keep them here in store. And whenever we do need them, we'll come and pick them up. Just a nice bonus, actually, from our, from our little trip. First things first, let's sleep to get the night away. And then let's, hopefully, those monsters will die. I really hate listening to them, so I want to get rid of them as soon as possible. All right, you go in there with the plants. That's good. Then I have the wool there with the tools. I know that doesn't really make sense, but oh well. And the sights, and that's just cobblestone that can stay. Right, so where do we want the leather for? Well, leather is useful for, as I said before, for making books. But, as you can see, we don't really have an enchanting table. Uh, where this dirt block is now, that's where the enchanting table is going to go. Um, in the future, when we have some diamonds, and we can make an enchanting table with uh, obsidian and what have you. That is correct. We indeed do not have an enchanting table yet. Unfortunately, that's not, well, not unfortunately. Actually, that's not the only use case for a book. A book can also be used to write things in. And that's actually one of the things that I've picked up from my job. Um, 
in case you didn't know, and I don't think I've actually told this, I am a uh, software developer. Uh, I mainly focus on PHP, and by mainly, I mean only. Um, although I have done other languages as well uh, during my career, if you will. Uh, I've done Java um, for close to seven months uh, professionally. Um, and I've also done C and C Sharp and C++ um, during my education, actually. Um, I don't really count those as being uh, professional, um, just because it's basically, those languages were actually used as an introduction um, to the programming principles. They weren't really taught uh, at university to actually, um, you know, teach you the language per se. They were basically tools um, to teach you the craft. Um, so I can't really say that I know those languages professionally, although um, programming is, is like driving a car. Uh, every car is different, um, but uh, once you know how to drive a car, you know, if you know where the clutch is, if you know where the brakes are, um, it's very easy to drive another car. I mean, it's not like if you know how to drive a Toyota, you can't really drive a BMW, stuff like that. So um, there are differences. There are, um, you know, syntax, syntax differences, for instance. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but trust me, there are small differences. Um, some differences have a lot of impact. Some differences have very little impact. Uh, but mostly, if you can write code in any language, you can 90% of the time read um, the code in another language uh, is basically what I'm trying to say. So uh, it's not uncommon for a programmer to know several uh, different programming languages. All right, back to the book, because that was actually the part that we came all the way out there for. Um, I want to write stuff down in it. Um, so <laughs> now I have to go back to my job the topic that I just left, but okay. Um, if I do my job, um, you know, while doing the stuff that I do, I have to deal with a lot of information because pro programming itself is usually not that hard. Um, the hard part about um, the stuff that I do is knowing the application that the customer wants me to develop. Um, so basically, you have to know what he means, you have to know his business, you have to know the rules that apply in his business. For instance, if you make a program or a website for a uh, tax corporation, then you have to know all the tax rules that apply to that corporation and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, it's really a lot of information that gets thrown at you. Um, so what people commonly do is they have this booklet along with them. Um, and you know, often when you see a developer, um, especially a developer that has been in the business for a couple of years, um, they'll always have this booklet with them. Um, and it's usually made with um, hardcover, you know, really thick, high quality paper. I think that's just to be fancy, um, to be honest, but still. Um, and they write stuff down in it. So whenever they have some new information from the client or about the program or a bug that they found or some new specifications that they're given, they'll open up the booklet, write it down, and then close it um, so they can actually refer to that uh, later uh, whenever a new conversation is brought up or whenever there's doubt on, on what was said and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's really useful. I've been doing it myself lately as well, um, although not really in a booklet. I haven't really bought one. Um, I just have a bunch of sheet, a bunch of papers next to my desk um, that I use, um, but it's the same principle really. Uh, it really helps um, keeping your mind clean. Uh, you don't have to remember all these kind of thing kinds of things. And that's really useful, uh, and that's also what I want to do for this world as well. So um, I want to write a bunch of stuff down so I don't remember them. Um, no, sorry. So I do remember them, um, although. Um, which will allow me to actually um, carry this thing with me and I can refer to it whenever there's doubt regarding a specific subject, uh, which will be very useful, I hope. So yeah, um, one of the first things that I want to write down is actually the coordinates of this uh, place. Um, so we have created this house here um, as our first temporary house. Um, and I'm not really sure how much longer I will stay here, um, but because this is the first of probably many houses, it also means that there's going to be a lot of resources spread along those houses. As you can see, we already have a lot of stuff here. And while this stuff isn't really all that impressive, um, 25 iron is really 
the most valuable thing that I have on me right now, but it could become um, a lot more. You know, imagine that you have two stacks of diamonds, 20 stacks of redstone, what have you. If this cave had been a little bit better, um, that might have been the case. And in that case, if we've gone through a couple of houses, we can't really take all that stuff with us. So um, that's why uh, we want to write the coordinates down of these um, houses so we can find them again later um, if we have actually found our permanent residence. Uh, and other stuff as well, you know, locations of spawners or uh, useful, useful things that we need to remember or get back to. We can just write them down here. We'll have them here at our disposal and it'll be really useful for us. Um, so, uh, first things first, the location of this house. These are the coordinates, um, but we need a name for it as well, I think. So, what do we want to call this? Um, I'm always really bad with names. Um, well, there really is a big hole down here, I think. I just should explore that later. Um, what to call it, what to call it. All right, I'm going to get back to you when I have a suitable name for this thing. Can you hear them? We found them. They're down here. We found their natural habitat. We have to be really quiet so we can go and investigate. So yeah, we found them. Um, remember the, the cave sounds that we were hearing when we were up there? Um, I guess it's actually this thing. Um, so it's... Um, way below um, where we just were. So a quick detour again. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to have a quick look at what this is exactly. I'm not really sure if it's a lot. Uh, all, the caves, all the caves that we've explored so far have been quite stingy, so I'm not really uh, having high hopes for this. Although it does seem more than I'm used to. Yeah, that seems pretty nice. That seems pretty decent. Okay, okay, we can work with this. That's good. Let's see down here. Now we have some visitors. Well, actually, we're the visitor. Oh. Find each other, find each other. Oh boy, it's a party. I'm getting beat in here. So yeah, that's uh, that's usually my tactic, just storm in and hit him. <laughs> Not really the the most pretty of uh, fighting there, but it is quite effective in small numbers, so. Oh wow, this is actually pretty good. Well, better than what we've been getting so far. Uh, all right, this is good. So we actually found a cave that we can explore and, you know, collect some resources from. That's good. All right, awesome. Ah, dumbass. All right. Um, so um, we've actually been recording for quite a while here. Um, so I'm gonna cut it here. Um, I am going to mine a bunch of these resources that I find. I'm going to go down in the cave a little bit, a little bit more. Um, let's see how far I get. Um, maybe I'll record, maybe I don't. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't know. Um, in the meantime, um, I'm going to ask for suggestions on what I should name my house. Um, uh, so if you have a suggestion for a cool name uh, for the house, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, I will read them all. Um, it's probably not going to be all that many anyway, so it won't be that much of a challenge. Uh, and if I like it, I will choose it, and you will have my eternal gratitude for as long as this series will run, uh, and possibly even longer beyond that. Um, and with all of that said, without further ado, uh, I bid you farewell, I thank you for watching, and hopefully, see you next time.